love to answer questions. Yes, ma'am. She's asking how, how uh, large do I have to make a map before I can detail it out, and uh, yeah, that's that's a really good question. You know that my my map of the United States was on the Illustrator on magnification 500, <laughs> so so I could control every single pixel. You know, is that what you're talking about, Carrie? Yeah, you know, uh, and and so that, I think that's one of the reasons that something like this works so well, which is a 500 percent enlargement taken from this map right here, because that's how, that's what I was looking at when I made the map. You know, I was looking at it up real close. And then, you know, you put a type label on, and then you got to back out to make sure that, you know, you don't want, you don't want UG lining up with something over here too badly, creating visual distractions and things like that. But, you know, back in the old uh, manual mapping days, the pen and ink days, like that map of Roseburg that, uh, that we started out with, that was made way over scale and reduced down because uh, pen and ink was not as precise uh, of a drafting medium as it, as it could have been, or as we have now. And so we made maps oversized and, and, and reduced them down. Yes, ma'am. When, when you were talking in your early days when you were creating a map, you shaded relief, you said you did it by hand. Uh -huh. What was the medium? So what was the medium for shade and relief? It was a uh, 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 colored pencil, you know, like gray pencils and airbrushes. You know, I, uh, uh, the, the Wallawa Mountains map that we saw, it was, uh, it was an airbrush shade and relief map, which represented three-fourths of all the shade and relief I'd ever done in my life. <laughs> what, what kind of paper, too? I, it, 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 was, it was done on uh, stable plastic. Frosted mylars, what I yeah, did the shade of relief on. Like I let it, yeah, you know, I, I would create a film uh, of the uh, contours and the and the streams and lakes, and use that as my shading guide. So I, you know, I've looked at maps long enough. I can look at contours and I know exactly which direction the hill is facing. And and with that with that knowledge, I could then uh, create the shading. You know, you you have this imagined light source, just like an illustrator does. You know, and you and you create shading that that reflects what it would look like if there was an artificial or light coming from a certain direction. Yeah, stupid question: Do cartographers consider themselves drastic? I don't know what they consider. Themselves. No, I mean, I, I'm a draftsman. So yeah. I'm just wondering what where the relationship is. You know, you know, I don't think so. I. Uh, cartographers in the United States consider themselves crunchers of big data. You know, they, they love it that there's all this new data available. And I do too, you know. There's things getting mapped that, that hadn't been mapped before. Uh, and it's really cool, you know, like migration patterns of mule deer. I mean, that couldn't have been mapped 50 years ago very accurately. But, I mean, they can put collars on deer now <laughs> with <laughs> GPS units on them and follow them all around Wyoming. And it's very cool. And, and we can map things like that now. And, and that's what cartographers consider themselves to be. You know, this, this taking of this, this data and getting it out there where people can, uh, can consume it. It's very cool. Sir? Uh, what are a couple, uh, I assume you've made a lot of maps, collected a lot of maps over the years. Um, so what are a couple of your favorites that you've collected and where'd you find them? What are my favorite maps? Well, uh, that, that, uh, that map of Switzerland, that general map of Switzerland, is my favorite map. Uh, and, uh, and I also have all the 100,000 uh, quadrangles of Switzerland that I've studied, and they are so cool. You know, I, I've never been to Switzerland, but I, I feel like I know it pretty well. They've got these railroads that will be like going up the side of a mountain, and then it gets too steep or something, and so the, the, the track goes into the mountain, it goes all the way around. It comes back out of the mountain up higher. Like in their maps, you pick that sort of stuff, and it's like, wow, I'm dazzled. <laughs> that is so cool. Uh, one of my other fa very favorite maps is a map made in Japan of the Imperial Palace grounds. They, they must have found the greatest artist in Japan to create this thing. It's, it's exquisite. Even the border on it is is inspirational art. 
So, you know, those, those are some of my favorites. The, the Italians also made really cool maps. You know, they, uh, uh, nice, different colors than the Swiss use and things like that, but, but really, really beautiful stuff. They didn't, they didn't finish their whole country, but they, they did quite a few of them. Yes, Kathy. Um, when you do your states, you know, that you pull out of your U.S. map, do you then add a lot more detail? Or is it pretty much basically just, you know, the, the state name and stuff like that? She's asking if uh, when I make these enlargements, if I put more detail on them, and I don't. If this is just a scan of a map just exactly like that, that uh, was enlarged in Photoshop by somebody that really knows what they're doing. If I had tried to enlarge that, I would have messed it up. You know, you got to sharpen and do things, and you have to do things in a specific order, and blah, blah, blah. And I, I'm a, a neophyte in Photoshop, but luckily there's other people who, who can do that sort of stuff. So yeah, you know, and I didn't know what was going to happen either when I enlarged it this, this size. I just, I had one made on a whim and printed on paper. And it was laying on a table, and I was like, oh yeah, that's all right. And then uh, several weeks later, I like took it home and I taped it to the wall. And I thought, oh, that's really cool. You know, it's big. I thought it would get all blown apart and it'd be full of empty space or something like that. But I think it still has a pretty nice balance to it. And in fact, you know, printed with these really rich pigments on canvas like this, put a frame around it. I mean, to me, as a map maker, as a geography guy, it has the aesthetic of an oil painting. Of, of like a landscape painting or something like that. Oh, yeah, good question. Yeah. yeah, I grew up in England, and um, in our geography lessons at school, we studied ordnance survey maps. Yeah. Something called ordnance survey maps, and I don't. Your maps seem more like the ordnance survey maps, but I don't. Are there any that are currently made in the U.S.? Or? Yeah. Uh, no. No. None at all. None at all. Uh, she's talking about the British. Uh, ordnance survey maps, and they're they're the British equivalent of the Swiss topographic office, and they are they're amazing, you know. In, in a in a their large scale maps of London would have every building, you know. Why not? And every 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 house in England is on a map, and it's it's not just a bunch of crap thrown on a piece of paper. <laughs> it's art, you know. American map making is, is, is the process of throwing a bunch of data into one place and calling it a map. It's not an artistic, they're not, they're not generally artistic illustrations. So, uh, uh, in, uh, over in Europe and in England, uh, people are much more geographically aware and literate because they grow up looking at these maps that are understandable illustrations of geography. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for pointing that out. You know, I heard from somebody from England recently who said, oh, I'm surprised you didn't have maps like this before. Yeah, well, we didn't have them. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, what is your view or observation on that much discussed map of the Bosphorus that looks like it was taken like a Google map from outer space, but it predates any of our space flights? And, you know, that's often linked with the things in South America with the Inca things and so forth. I don't have any idea what you're it's talking about. It's a map that looks beautifully realistic of that whole Bosphorus area, but it was made way before space travel. And so some people said, well, it had to be made, you know, again. With the old oh, well. Well, you've been here, you know, but I don't know, maybe you've heard of it and had some view on that. Uh, yeah, uh, no. Uh, but I can tell you that it doesn't require space travel to make a map that looks like it was no, trained in space. A map that has to be taken from high for a huge area. It's yeah. Like Google Maps, you know, like what we have seen the ones of Puget Sound and so forth, you know, right. from space. It right. looks like that, and it's been much discussed. Well, you know, one thing that we do in the United States is we fail to recognize, excuse me, the genius of, of, of other uh, cultures. And as far as I'm concerned, people 500 years ago in Latin America, whatever, could have had the, the technology to do that, to, you know, to, to gather information from all these places and then create a representation of the land that, that we go, oh, how is that possible? You know? Well, there's a lot of things that are possible. You know, there's, there's a lot of evidence that there was 
uh, uh, interactions between uh, Asia and the United States by way of sailing vessels way before Columbus. And, and I think our, our uh, reluctance to accept that is just with thinking that, well, oh, no, those people couldn't have done it. Well, sure they could. You know? Yeah, more questions? Please. Yes, sir. Um, how, do you, how do you like Bill Sullivan guidebook maps, which are maps uh, which he kind of mechanically makes look like a 3D illustration? He's, he's asking what I think of Bill Sullivan's maps. Uh, I love them. <laughs> uh, I, I met Bill when uh, he was making his uh, first uh, book about wild lands in, in Oregon. And uh, he came to me, wanted, wanted me to make these maps, and he was showing me what he needed. And I, I said, Bill, you don't need me to make these maps. Let me show you how to do them. <laughs> so I introduced him to technical pins and stuff like that. And he started making these maps, and I love them. I, you know, to me, each time he comes out with a new hiking book, it's a new uh, treasure of cartography. You know, they're very effective maps. They're not technically uh, advanced. But uh, they're they're very useful to, to help one understand the, the you know what they're going to be facing when when they hike something and so yeah I have a, I have a lot of respect for Bill's stuff yeah. Why do you think your most recent map is your most exquisite map? The one you love the most. Oh, she asked why why my Chesapeake Bay map and I consider it my best map. Well, because I put more effort per square inch into it. Just basically that. You know, like like the, I was showing you the, about line, breaking lines that run through type. Well, the, the lines on that map just don't break. They just start to fade. They fade down to maybe 50%. And then they come out the other side of the piece of type and they fade back to 100 Or they, they gain back to 100%. Just all these subtleties like that that I put into them. Which I was able to do because I wasn't mapping the whole United States. I was just mapping a part of it in a sort of general way. So it's that. It just had more time to, to play with things and stuff like that. So are you still starting? How's your... Uh... <laughs> well, I, I <laughs> obviously haven't start. missed any meals, have I? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm making a living, you know. But, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a different thing. Yes. Thank you. I... Uh, I, uh, you know, I made the map of the United States and uh, won, won top national honors for it, and I was really hoping I would, because I had sort of an agenda. <laughs> you know, to become successful, you got to do these things. So, okay, there, I just, when I found out that I won, I just checked it off. <laughs> and, uh, but nothing happened, you know. Won top national award, went back to Washington, D.C. With a, with a marketing friend of mine, and we beat on doors, and... We gave away maps and we talked to people and hey, national award winning map, zero. Nobody, nobody was was interested in it. And uh, so I thought, okay, uh, that was a learn, that was an expensive lesson. And and so I uh, I I decided I needed to find somebody who had already written about maps. And I found Seth Stevenson at Slate.com back in New York City had written a review of uh, MapHead by that Ken Jennings guy, the Jeopardy guy. And so, oh, here's somebody that's written about geography, about maps and stuff. So I, I contacted him with a real quick email, but I don't know, you know, what national words want to take a look. And so we, I established a relationship with this guy. And for months, we'd talk on the phone and email back and forth. And uh, man, we had conversations where I was on my cell phone, rah, 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 raving about woo, geography and stuff. And, and uh, after the first uh, time I talked to him on the phone for an hour or so, he said, "You know, I don't. I, that's an interesting story, but I don't. I don't think I can write anything that my editor's going to want to print and or run." And so, uh, you know, that didn't that didn't deter me. It's like, hey, if I'm going to be successful, I can't. You can't be a quitter. So I, you know, I, I think about things. I send him off another passionate email. Then we're back on the phone again. Blah 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 blah. And he says, yeah, I'm going to write something. You know, we're just got to get the graphics together. We're going to run it before Christmas in uh, like 2011 or something like that. And I'm so glad that that didn't happen because what eventually happened was that they, they ran this story on uh, January 2nd, 
January 2nd. And they told me, you know, before I left to go to Yosemite, that it was going to run on the 3rd. So I figure I'm going to get back on the 3rd and start taking care of customer stuff, because there's always customer stuff when you get an article or something like that. And, uh, and so I, uh, am a, I, I'm in Yosemite, my cell phone's dead, and uh, I didn't care, you know, on vacation, I don't want to talk to anybody. And so I get back to uh, Susanville, California, charged, have my cell phone charged up, and I get, go to my messages, and it's like, oh my God. All these people are calling me from all over the country. Hey, great article in Slate, wish we could buy your map. What happened was Slate runs the article not on the 3rd, but on the 2nd. When I'm in Yosemite with no cell phone service, and my website is immediately overwhelmed and goes down. It is down for 12 hours, 12 and a half hours, until I get to Susanville and I call up Pat Dunleavy. Remember that name? Well, he's also a web guy. <laughs> he built the site. It's crashed. I wake him up in the middle of the night back in Massachusetts. He gets the thing back on and he says, oh, by the way, you missed 141,000 hits. So, yeah, I could have retired or something, but I'm hoping a lot of those people came back. But uh, long story short is I went from being a struggling artist to somebody who needed a bookkeeper on the 2nd of January, 2012. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, people that I deal with, hey, you need a bookkeeper. Okay, I'll give you a bookkeeper. <laughs> so, any, any other questions, or shall we call it a night? All right, hey, thanks, everybody. Good